as these beautiful clear nights continue, I tend to get out more and more in the night. And I was out, I think two days ago, trying out the Galaxy M94, but this plan was cancelled by this Galaxy being really tiny and not that nice to see through my scope. And that's the point where I thought, well, there's just not any good things to photograph from my backyard over here. I shot this galaxy two times now, getting better each time. And tonight, I'm gonna do it justice. Join me as I photograph the Whirlpool Galaxy. And I don't think that there's a better way to photograph this galaxy than with some good old synthwave. So this took me about 20 minutes. Now all I gotta do is get this light away, it's annoying, and set the software up and then we can see a Whirlpool Galaxy very soon. Seems like the random desktop background is in my favor tonight. Last time I did this, I did it to the horse at Nebula to show you, show you guys where it is exactly. And now, Let's do it again. But this time this should be way easier and in focus because I'm sorry to the users. This will be fun. I saw 102,000. <laughs> Holy shit. It's even auto focusing right now. Look at this, it's amazing. I saw maybe 16 should be fine. 1600? Let's go for something more. 3200. Here we have this image taken right now. The star you can see in the bottom left here, right here, is the last star of the Big Dipper handle. I forgot what it's called right now. I will put it on the screen. Let's zoom in on this one again. Find the correct spot. This one, these two, there's the triangle. Look at this! Look at that, in the middle right there, the whirlpool. It's so amazing. All right, I've just started APT and PhD, but the first thing we need to do is to do the polar alignment. And I've had many questions about a good guiding graph from PhD in the, in the recent video and on Instagram. And I can tell you one thing that will definitely make this graph better is a perfect polar alignment. You can do pretty good things with your eye through the polar finder scope but doing it with, for example, the pole master is beyond everything. So we can see Polaris right here. And now the first thing we need to do is align the stars. And I think this is the right spot. All right. This is the initial setup. I did this already multiple times. We're gonna use this location. And now, it still looks good. Now I have to get Polaris into the small little circle there. So I'm gonna now stand up, I'm not gonna drop my phone. And I will move at 
first the azimuth to get Polaris in there. And look, you saw me, you saw me leveling the tripod earlier in the time lapse, and this is why this is so important. Polaris is already there. If you don't do this to your tripod, you will have a much harder time polar aligning. So this is good for now. This here is only the rough polar alignment. And this is how far I could go with my eyes through the polar finder scope. But the fine tuning polar alignment is happening now. Gonna again confirm the location of Polaris and the surrounding stars. And now the monitoring will start the drift alignment. It's gonna compare two stars, Polaris and the drift of this star close to it. And now you can see the optimal, let's say, the North Celestial Pole is right here, and this is where I'm pointing it right now. So now I'm gonna again move... Wait. The altitude bolts of the mount. I'm gonna get it close to there. This will do for today. I did a nice and thorough optical cleaning on the scope tonight. Let's start the camera cooling to minus 15. Connect everything in PhD. Let's see if the imaging camera is still in focus. Look at this. That's Polaris over there. <laughs> I love optics. And with the power of plate solving I will now move to my first star. And I think I will now say the near solving software that this is the co are the coordinates. Solve. Choose the brightest star I can imagine in Ursa Major, Dube. Dube, right, not Deneb. Deneb will is the... is Riga. Enable tracking on the mount. Move to Dube, please. I'm shooting broadband tonight on this galaxy. At least as broadband as I can with the light pollution filter. Next move, and now it should be there. There it is! One of my favorite stars. Don't tell anyone, but my favorite star is Capella. Dead center. That's how I like it. The colors are off, as you can see. Different wavelengths of light are behaving differently in glass, but I think this is enough. Who knows the number out of the head? I know, it's 51. Go. Yes. It will solve again and be dead center on the Whirlpool Galaxy on the second try. I can see Capella in the west. Why is the solve taking so long? Come on. I switched from blind solving to near solving because it works better. If you get the so there we go. If you get the software setup, it works way better. And I still have blind solving to back me up if something fails. Let me crank up the gain. Can we see it in one second exposure? There it is! Did you see it? Beautiful. This will be the last entry of the log before I go inside because it's really cold. Uh, exposure number 8 is in now. I will now double click on this galaxy and pointing at the keyboard for a reason. I hope in the final image you will understand why I love the Whirlpool Galaxy that much. And finally, I will have a new profile pic. This galaxy is many, many light years away. What we see right now is the past. What we see right now is so many years, millions of years into the past. This is beyond beautiful. This is why I love this hobby. And I, will, I think I will stop it right here now because it's getting really cold. I hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Tim, I'm an astro addict. I wish you clear skies, and as always, may the night be with us.